so lovely to it see really you. It really is, Jade. The most incredible, heartwarming story. So, Mum and Dad, um, that's Diana and Neil, in foster parents for seven years, fostered seven children. Yeah. And so you as a family, quite used to having children coming in, sometimes temporarily, and then being, you know, off they go to a, a new home. Yeah, so we was always used to having children come in and then move on. And it was quite hard, but we always knew that it was the best thing because they, we was giving them a second chance at life and yeah. Yeah. a chance to grow. So when you met Christian for the first time, I mean, he was, he was terribly young and he was in a terribly poor state, actually. He was in a coma and there was a big chance that he wouldn't survive. So yeah. as a family, this was something you discussed. Um, but you brought him into your life. Um, he came home with you and really... Although he wasn't hitting the same milestones as, as other children, he was hitting milestones for him that were a little bit of a miracle, weren't they? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a big discussion that my family had to make when choosing to take him, but immediately all of us said that we wanted to take him on and give him this chance at life to grow and develop. Although the circumstances weren't good, we just knew we had to help him in any way we possibly could. Well, there are heartbreaking parts of this story because um, you were trying to find him a future family. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness you didn't because, yeah. you know, you are just incredible <laughs> with him. <laughs> thank you. But you even had an open day to come and meet him and, and nobody came. Yeah, it was, it was quite hard because we knew the real Christian and we knew how amazing he was. And then for him to be up for adoption and nobody to come forward and nobody to want him, it was, it was quite harsh because on paper, he was this boy that isn't hitting his milestones, is severely disabled, doesn't have much chance of life. But in person, he was just Christian and he was like the light in any room and like just a miracle child, but obviously that wasn't what the people were seeing on paper. Mm. They, they didn't know the true Christian like we did. Um, so we've always kind of been told that like he would never be able to communicate and that because of his visual impairments, he, he won't be able to see signing and he won't understand it. But I just didn't want to take no as an answer. He enjoyed watching it on TV. And I thought if I can do it and engage him with it, then even if he enjoys it, that's I'm still getting an amazing thing from that because he's happy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I did sign in with him for, like, a year and a half before he did anything back. Well, we've actually got the moment, I think, here that he signed for the first time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so we'll just have a look at this and then explain what happened. Breakfast is finished. Can you sign finished? Good boy! Well done! So, oh so how did that happen for the first time? It must have been a hell of a shock, cos he was desperate yeah. to communicate. Yeah, so he, he was... You could tell in his eyes and um, by the noises he would make, he just wanted to be able to talk to us. So we started signing around the house, so we would say every time his food was finished, we'd be like, oh, Christian, it's finished now. And then he, he'd smile, but he never did it. And on that day, he just signed it, and I was like, Mom, mom, and I was crying my eyes out. I was like, come here, come here, please, Christian, finish. And he did it again. And then from that day on, ev every time he'd finish, he would sign finish he without finished. us telling him. And then once he'd got that one sign, it's like something clicked. And then he'd learn sign after sign after sign. And now he knows, I'd say, like, around 200 signs. Wow. Hi, Christian. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Good we morning. have been loving your songs. All oh, your Thank singing you. is so good. Yeah. You're a very <laughs> talented boy. So thank you. What do you say? Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you for being here. <laughs> um, oh. So for, for, for you guys now, you have defied the odds. Yeah. You've proved all the experts wrong. Um, you have this unbelievable bond. Oh, you really do. <laughs> you <laughs> really we do. met you earlier on and it's <laughs> so, so yeah. lovely. Um, and, and his development now is down to you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would disagree. I'd say it's all down to him because his resilience is it's what gets me through the day. It's just amazing. And mm. like you said before, he's not hitting his milestones that every, all other children are hitting. He's hitting milestones that he should never be able to hit. Yeah. So him saying, like, one word is like me being able to speak ten languages. Absolutely. It's just Let me give amazing. Let tissue to, I know. Tissue to Mama's Mom, mouth. you must be <laughs> so proud, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's really lovely to have you here, and congratulations on your award. We'll come to that in just a moment. But as I said there in the intro, you started um, stammering at the age of four. And, and for you, primary school and secondary school, you didn't feel like you had that much support. Um, yeah, so since I was four, um, I didn't really get support at all from from the schools that I, that I went to. 
Um, so from four to, from four to nineteen, uh, a single teacher stopped me to, to speak to me regarding my stammer. Yeah. Um, so I felt like that um, you know this was something that, that I need to deal with myself, um, right. and I felt like um, I was probably the the like only person in the world who stammered. Mm. Oh. Um, so so that was really tough, you know. What, what was it at its worst? Because you think, you know, when you're at school and, <clears throat> uh, and, and everyone hates putting their hand up, yeah. you know, if it's being picked to read or even yeah. give your name out. Um, for people who summer, your summer will, will fluctuate. So um, for, for, for majority of people that summer, it's something that will stay with them for the rest of their, uh, of their lives. You'd always wanted to be a teacher, hadn't you? Yes, since I was 15. Yeah. Um, it was something that I've always wanted to do, so I, so, so I made sure that no one was going to stop me from doing that. Although not everyone thought it was a great idea. You were at a teacher conference, weren't yes. you? Yes, so when I was, I think I was 17 uh, um, um, at the time, and I went to a lot of the teaching conferences to get um, advice about the best ways to apply for teacher training. Um, and there was a, a, a person there who did say that, you know, teaching might be something that, um, that we'll find quite difficult, because of the fact that you have to speak for majority of the time. Um, and he did say that I should consider a different career. Uh, of course, you know, that did put me down. I thought, wow, okay, you know, this is a teacher that's telling me. Um, of course, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like listen to him, you know, at all. So, no, good. And he, they were <clears> very, very wrong. In fact, you say that having this has made you a, a better teacher. Um, yes, um, it's forced me to, like, uh, you know, to develop certain tra personal traits, like um, I always make sure that I listen before I speak, um, that I choose my words wisely. So if I do tell people off, um, probably at, at, at a maximum of 30 seconds, and I choose the right words to say, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or if there's any people that are fighting, I'll, I'll make sure that I I'll, um, uh, 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 like analyze the situation and just yeah. think before I mm. um, approach this And this how do the pupils with... react? Um, my pupils have been extremely um, supportive. Uh, 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 my schools, uh, um, the school that, uh, that I'm working in, uh, 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 Washford Heath Academy, they've been supportive as well, and the people are extremely respectful. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they've um, accepted me at, um, at the start of the year. Uh, I mean, in fact, um, a few people have told me that, you know, they, they appreciate the fact that I've been through a lot of um, hardship to get to where yeah. I am, so I felt like I've uh, I got their respect. And the beginning of this conversation, we talked about how you had no support through primary and secondary school, and that's something that you wanted to change. And you've started your own support group yeah. within the school. And to begin with, I think only a couple of pupils signed up to it, but now it's it's thriving with lots of students coming along. Um, yes, so the group has grown from three to 14. Mm -hmm. um, and that was simply through a stammering awareness. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we do a lot of fun activities Activities, basically a lot of confidence building activities um, and it's also a chance for the people who stammer to just get things off their chest and mm. to uh, to be in a um, safe um, um, safe place where they can talk about stammering yeah um, so I'm sure no, enjoy. well in front of us on the table here <laughs> there's the award this uh, was an award ceremony hosted by uh, Harry Hill uh, mm. at London's Grosvenor House Hotel in Park Lane uh, Congratulations. Well done, you. What do you think Great. they're going to say? Because they didn't know, did they? Until until today, I don't think the pupils actually knew that you'd won the award. Um, yeah, um, so I think they will be shocked that I've won the Tess Cool Award. Um, I don't think they were expecting it. Um, in fact, I didn't even tell most of my pupils. The, yeah. the, whole, the whole reason you're here, I think we'll, yeah. we were going to do this a little later, yeah. we're going to do it now, um, because uh, Alfie was a, a, a dog... Um, Charlie, who, do you remember uh, Alfie? Who actually... The doggy. Alfie visited Charlie in hospital a number of times. He actually yeah. went from Manchester, yeah. then went to Liverpool, Who's and they let Charlie Alfie. have Alfie in hospital in Liverpool. And so they haven't seen each other for ages, so why don't we bring Alfie, Alfie in I now? think we should, I think and, we should. Uh, he's brought... Uh, okay. Oh. Oh. Who's that? <laughs> this is uh, yeah. Susie Empson, who uh, is Alfie's owner. Uh, Hello, it's talking. Oh. There you go. Oh, okay. Do you want to put, pop him on yeah. the other side so you he can see, be Yeah, you can see Alfie. Alfie and cuddle Alfie oh. for yeah. him. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if, you almost don't need to do the interview because yeah. you saw for yourself with your eyes there the difference. Oh that that little dog yeah. has so, made in his life. A lot of the time in hospital, Charlie, obviously, he had so many treatments going on, he's in a lot of pain. Uh, we were all stressed, yeah. but whenever Alfie came in, 
it was kind of, you felt like a bit of home to come into the hospital, because it's so clinical. And then yeah. seeing a dog in the hospital, he's got a dog himself, yeah. it basically just, it took the pressure off. You had 15 minutes of where you were just... And you knew he was happy. Yeah, oh, you could just... see, even in, in his worst times when he could barely move or talk, because you, you could see was... him shine. For you guys, it was yeah. very dark, wasn't yeah. it? I, yeah, there's no darker moment than, than finding that information yeah. out. And, yeah, any parent who gets that kind of diagnosis, yeah. it's... Mm. Yeah. How is yeah, he now? Yeah, can't imagine. Uh, he's doing really well what? in himself. He did have a relapse, though, uh, back in August. Yeah. Uh, so he was operated on his birthday on the 13th of September. So he's now having interventional chemotherapy to try and keep, keep it at bay. Uh, but with the pendamoma, it, it may come back. Mm. Right. So we've just got to... Day by day at the moment. Day by day, yes, yeah. and that's the only way. The difference it makes, yeah. isn't it? Because you saw how anxious and stressed, Absolutely, and then yeah. now, so... He could sit there for hours, you know, with him. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. And Susie, um, Hi, it, Susie. Takes a, <laughs> it, it takes a special sort of dog. Um, and, uh, and, and he, Alfie's been trained, hasn't he? In yes. what way? What are you trained for? How so, do you do it? A lot of it's temperament and good behaviour, so just being a very good boy or girl. And then they have to be just the right amount of friendly, so friendly but not jumping up. Uh, um, happy to just sit quietly if what? maybe you're visiting somebody who doesn't like dogs and wants to chat to the person. So they go through a little doggy exam mm -hmm. and the human volunteers have a little, a little chat to see why they're going into it and, and if they know what they're going into, and then what? you're off. <laughs> and it was all thanks to uh, pet, Pets... This is the charity. Does yes. it say the charity's name is...? Pets as Therapy. Pets as Therapy, oh, that's yeah. right. And, um, and they were the ones that first introduced uh, it's Charlie. Yes. Um, and what was lovely was that they worked with the first hospital that Charlie yeah. was at. Yeah. And it didn't look like for a little bit of time when Charlie had to move because yeah. he needed surgery elsewhere yeah, that we... he was going to be... She was going to be able to go. No, and thanks to Susie, she contacted the hospital, basically made special arrangements, and after Charlie had his, his, uh, his surgery in Alder Hay, the... Uh, they let Charlie visit, uh, yeah. Alfie visit Charlie, yeah. and we thank Susie for that because she, she travelled across the northwest just yeah. to to make it happen. Oh, He's wow. got his own lanyard. He's got his own hospital. Oh, HF that, that, yeah. that's look, very just cool. Just look at that. Alfie's got his own lanyard. <laughs> I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely love it. Um, we should explain the reason behind this award and the bravery bravery that you displayed. And this was in March 2018, and you were in a London hospital, and a colleague of yours was had fallen ill, so you'd taken them to hospital. And what what happened? Um, so there was a call out for security um, and then security ran past me a little while later um, and then there was still, still people standing around and looking in one direction so I thought I'd better go investigate and then I sort of heard on my radio um, a call come through and we don't get very good signal there so I just heard the name of the hospital where I was yeah. and then I went through double doors, went through another set of double doors and um, sort of a small group of people there and I sort of stepped round them and I was just faced with this um, male pointing a gun at a nurse. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, and it wasn't just that as well because there was a briefcase down by his yeah. foot and, of course, you're sort of very quickly, I mean, split seconds, thinking, right, he's got a gun, he's pointing it at a nurse, there's a briefcase down here. Yeah. That could also be a bomb, potentially. Yeah, absolutely, with the terrorist threat at the moment. That's yeah. What's your, what's your, what does training say? Um, so, we are trained, if there's a, if, 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 you know, someone's gun, we run the other way, but I was so close to this person by the time I realised what was going on that it was sort of fight or flight and I just went for So him. you tackled him? Yep. Um, and uh, without n knowing anything about whether or not uh, it was a gun, a loaded gun, you have to assume that obviously it is, yep. I suppose you have to assume that there could be a bomb in that, in that suitcase. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so you went for it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is it one of those things where you look back at it and think, well, you know, that sort of happened without me even thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just... I still, you know... I, yeah, that's... And you're a mum. Still, yeah. I mean, you know, so when you go into, into a situation like that and, and police officers, firefighters, ambulance people put their lives on the line all the time for us, that's why we do this Emergency Services Award, so that we can actually say thank you to everybody who keeps us safe. Um, um, but, but you were there that day. You threw yourself into it. You were a you know, young mum. Um, do you think of the danger? Not at the time, no. And I would do exactly the same thing tomorrow. I know I would. 
And I know all my colleagues would as well, because... But that is what sets you apart from the rest of us. And I know you just say, oh, it's all in the line of duty and this, that and the other. But actually, that does set all of you apart from all of us, because instinctively, I think most of us would, would run the other way. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you yeah, know, I, I put that uniform on each day. I know that there's a possibility that I could um, face danger, so... Yeah, well, amazing.